Hi, me again, and welcome to part two of TV licenses around the world. Now, in part one, I showed you the countries that charge your tele tax onto your monthly household bills. In part two here, we're gonna look at some of the other ways that countries are ripping off their citizens by charging them the tele tax. Let's take a look. Now in Austria, you have to register every device that you own that is capable of receiving a broadcast signal. Now the company that administers this is uh, a third party company, but it's 100% owned by the Austrian National Broadcaster. 3.4 million households have registered to pay their tele tax with an evasion rate of around 2.5%. The fee that you pay for your tele tax in Austria varies a bit depending on what area of Austria you live in, but the highest rate is around about 300 quid a year. In Croatia, the teletax is mandatory if you own any equipment capable of receiving a broadcast signal. And many people in the UK still think this is the case, but in the UK, it is not. The interesting thing about the Croatian teletax is that there's no sort of real fixed rate that you pay. They bill it at 1.5% of the net average annual salary for a Croatian person. So it works out at about 135 quid a year for the average Croatian with one telly and one radio in their household. And again, the fee goes to support a national broadcaster who is commercial. Although this time they're only allowed to show 9% per hour of commercials, which sounds like a lot to me. But if you just show a few more commercials, you can scrap the telly tax and save people a lot of money. In the Czech Republic, the telly tax is five quid a month per household, no matter how many tellies you have in the house. The only problem is, if you're a business, you pay it per TV. So sports bars must be playing a bloody fortune in telly tax. How ridiculous. In Denmark, you have to pay the telly tax if you have any equipment capable of receiving television. So not just the telly, but if you've got a half decent smartphone, you will have to pay the telly tax, even if you don't own a telly. Now the fee is about 170 quid a year, and that goes to support their national broadcaster, who is a bit like BBC One. But the interesting thing about Denmark is they have the equivalent of a BBC Two, but that is commercial. It's only the main one that's not. So why not make the main one commercial, scrap the 170 quid a year, make everybody happy? Although to be fair, there is talk of abolishing the tele tax in Denmark as well, uh, but it's not actually gonna be abolished. From what I hear, they're just gonna move it onto a monthly bill like all the countries did in part one. If you have any more details on Denmark for me, let me know in the comments below. In Germany, as you may expect, they have a pretty no-nonsense approach to the whole thing. It's a flat rate of 17 quid per household, no matter how many tellies you have. But you do have to pay again if you have a holiday home or a rental property or a summer house, something like that. Interestingly, Germany's public broadcaster is one of the best funded public broadcasters in the world, and that's probably because the Germans like to do things properly and they will pay their bills. Ghana also has a national broadcaster and therefore also has the tele tax. This time it's a bit more affordable, 35 SEDI a month, equivalent to about £4.50 a month. But again, given the low average annual salary in Ghana, it's probably more expensive than it sounds and also should be abolished. Ireland, yep. Yeah. Ireland has a tele tax about 150 quid a year, which again goes to support a national broadcaster who is again commercial, cake and eating it, yet again. Although to be fair to Ireland, they do give OAPs free TV licenses and disabled people also get concessions as well. But still, bloody get rid of it. What's wrong with you people? You're showing adverts on there. You don't need the tele tax. Now Japan is quite an interesting one. The tele tax there is about 140 quid a year. You get a little discount if you pay by direct debit. But the interesting point is that if you don't pay it, there's no comeback, there's no fines, nothing. Because of that, evasion rates are through the roof. It's crazy how many Japanese just don't pay their tele tax. But if nothing's gonna to happen to you, why would you pay? Poland has a TV license to support its state broadcaster, and it's about five quid a month, but at least here, the state broadcaster isn't commercial. Where it gets interesting in Poland is they don't really have a way to enforce it. You have to register to pay it yourself, and because of that, there's quite a high evasion rate. Now, you pay it in the post office and 
your local TV license inspector is your postman, but they have no rights to enter your property. They can't do anything. So evasion rates are very, very high in Poland. In fact, they are 92%. Yep, only 8% of Poles pay their teletax. And if nothing can happen because you don't pay it, why would the 8% pay it? That's what I don't get. Weird. Slovakia. Slovakia charges about 450 a month for their teletax, and that goes towards supporting a national broadcaster who is, again, commercial. What a joke. What a joke. In Slovenia, the teletax is about 12 quid a month, and again, that goes to support a national broadcaster who is, once again, commercial. How the hell do these people get away with it? How do the companies get away with it? And why do people stomach it? In the UK, we support a national broadcaster, but at least it's not commercial. If they showed adverts, you'd want your money back, wouldn't you? It's a similar situation over in South Africa, where the teletax is about 23 quid a year. It goes to support a national broadcaster, who is, again, commercial. But at least in their defence, they do have some concessions for OAPs and disabled people there. Now, in Switzerland, things got really interesting with the teletax. There was a referendum in 2018 where the public got to vote on whether to keep or to scrap the teletax. What do you think happened? Wrong. 71% of Swiss people voted to keep their teletax, and it's about 300 quid a year. Crazy people in Switzerland. It's all that chocolate. Now, Turkey has a very different way of funding the TV license. They do charge 2% tax on your electric bills to help fund the national broadcaster, but the main balance of their money comes from a percentage charged to you and the supplier and the importer of the television when you buy it. Even computers are taxed in that way because you can watch telly on them. So it seems if you were Turkish, it's a bit tricky to avoid paying your telly tax. Personally, I'd drive across the border and buy a telly from another country. But then the rules state that they charge a percentage to the importer of the television to help fund the national broadcaster. And then why do I be classed as the importer? I don't know. Is there any Turkish people out there? Let me know if you've been able to avoid your telly tax in Turkey. So that brings us to the UK. No free ones for the elderly. Everybody hearing scare stories about fines and prison sentences for not paying it. Loads of people thinking that if you own a telly, you have to have a TV license, and TV licensing is doing nothing to get rid of that myth. Ridiculous. So now you know what's going on in all the other countries, what do you think is going to happen to the teletax in the UK? Do you think they'll throw it on top of your council tax? Do you think they'll put it on your electric bill? Do you think they'll scrap it? You know, what do you think is going to happen? Leave your comments below, and we'll try and have a bit of an interesting debate about this. So that's the end of this video for now. I think I covered all the countries. I'll see you in another video again soon. Thanks for watching.